Hey everybody, it's Laura with Jot and Tittle Vintage Typewriters. I'm so glad to be back. It's been a couple weeks again. Um, just, I get really busy with the magazine and it, I have to take a break every once in a while from the typewriters. But what a way to come back with this Olympia Traveler in blue and like this antique white. And so I'm gonna lift it up and show, show it to you a little bit more up close. Um, this is a very, very handsome typewriter. I love the sharp lines in it. I love the colors. Um, just very modern, very handsome, and very attractive in its own way. I mean, I love, there's something I love about each of the typewriters, the old ones, and just how sophisticated and um, like they're like a piece of art. And then the rounded corners on some of the um, more mid-century moderns from the 50s and 60s. And now this is a 70s version. And um, I just love like the techno look to it or whatever you want to call it. Really in the color blocking on it. It also comes in orange and some other colors. I think I've seen green. Um, but gray and white, I think, is the most common. But this one is just beautiful. And um, so we're going to take a look at it before I start typing so I don't forget. Just wanted to show you the typing page I did for the demo video for our website. Just so you can kind of see what the font looks like. It's a, This one in particular has a, a 10 um, CPI on that. And so this is going to be the uh, instructional tutorial video we're gonna look at. So if you have one, grab it and follow along. So I'm just gonna start from the beginning uh, with the assumption that maybe you don't know anything about typewriters and um, we'll go from there. And I guess the first thing I need to do is, um, this is considered ultra portable. So if you take it out of the case, this handle will be down and um, and you'll want to lift that up. You won't be able to use it without lifting it up. The carriage might be locked, and here's the carriage lock here. So when it's in the up position, it's locked. I can't move it. In the down position, you'll see it kind of jumps. And the carriage release is actually this lever, which normally you would think of it as, like on other models, that's the paper release, but this is the carriage release here. So you just pull that forward. This has a really nice, sharp, clear bell. I love that. The paper release is gonna be back here. And that is, well, I'll show you when we load the paper. Also, let me lift this up for you. I know it's gonna be really close, so. But right back here, this is where you set your margins. So you just press and drag. All right, to wherever you would like your margins. And you'll see this little metal piece in here. That is your paper holder. And um, let me put this down and we'll release that. So right here is your paper holder release. There you go. And it snaps back down if you want. Okay, and then also on the um, left side here, this is your line selector. So when you hit your return handle, it's going to advance either one, two, oops, or I think that was the three. One, two. Anyway, that's your line selector, one, two, and three. Um, let's go ahead and load some paper. Now, when you load your paper, you don't need to shove it down in there. Um, you just set it there, turn that handle, pulls it right through, make sure it goes underneath this metal bar. And I like to bring it up about halfway where the two ends meet to make sure that it's even and it's slightly off. So I'm going to pull my release lever over here. I'm going to pull it over, open, adjust the paper to where I want it, and then re-engage it there. So that's how you load your paper. To take it out, you can release, release the paper and pull it out, or you can just roll it up however you want to do that. So uh, we're gonna go here, this is the cover, and on the cover, you just um, wanna pull gently, and it just pops out, and you'll see it's got like a little rubber piece right here. Um, the rubber piece is missing on this side, and what happens is on the cover, it's got this little metal piece, 
and that's just gonna fit right into that rubber. And so when you put it in, make sure it snaps in all the way. So you'll see the ribbon, and it does use a universal ribbon. We've put a fresh one in in our typewriter. If you need a fresh ribbon, you can visit our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com. Um, when you load the ribbon, make sure you have, if you, when you're ready to load the spools with the ribbon in there, make sure the red, not the red, the black is on the top and red is on the bottom. I am out of practice. Holy smokes. Okay. And then it goes around. You're going to have to pay attention to the guide wires. So let me lift this up a little bit here. And you'll see there's a guide wire right here. And the same thing on the other side. And you want that ribbon to go around the outside of it and across, okay? Same with the other side. This also happens to be your ribbon reversal. And so whichever direction. So I did it, I just clicked it over there and now it's not gonna let me click again because it's going the opposite direction. So now I go over here to click. Won't let me click again, that means I gotta come over here. So when you get to the end of your spool, it's not the end of the ink in your ribbon, Reverse the direction. You'll want to go back and forth many, many times before you use up all of that ink. Um, to remove it, you'll notice there's a little tab, metal tab, and you need to pull these back, which is like a little spring-loaded arm that's holding that spool in. And so pull that back, lift out your spool, and then you can change that out. And again, and it's very messy, so make sure you have some gloves or a washcloth nearby. And when you do put it in, make sure you get that ribbon around this guide wire here. And then there's an up close image on um, my foot product, uh, product description. That link is below. And you can go in there and then you can just either bookmark or you can save that image to your desktop and that'll just help you um, load, get that ribbon in um, through the little wires here the way you need to. I just lost all of my words. Anyway, here's your type bars, your um, typing basket, the escapement area, that's all down in here. Okay, we're gonna snap this back on. And we don't focus on the repair aspects of the typewriters for the videos. There's several videos out there that will do that. I'm just trying to give you a general idea and then I'm just helping you learn to use your typewriter. So that's my purpose. That's why I don't go into detail. My husband would be the one to do the detail on that. And that's why I don't always know the names of all the parts. I'm like that doohickey there, that thing there. <laughs> I can just tell you how to use it. Okay, so then we've got our keyboard. I've got this loaded. Let's go ahead and start typing. And um, I'm just gonna type 1970s Olympia Traveler. And white. And I already showed you what the it looked like up close. So that's kind of what it sounds like. You've got, you don't have a tab on this. It's really basic. You have your backspace. Backspace does not erase. And then you have your margin release right here. It says MR. And so what that is, let's come over. Okay, so I'll put it right here. And so this is, so when you get close to your margin, that bell is gonna go off saying, hey, time to hit your return handle. But if you're in the middle of a word or a thought, you might wanna finish it. But then the carriage is gonna stop on you. And so this margin release, if you hit that, then you can finish your word, hit your return handle, and go on to the next line. So that's what the margin release is for. You've got your shift here, and then the little one is your shift lock. To release the shift lock, you just press either one of those. That'll release it. Um, most of you know, the without the shift is lowercase, shift is uppercase. Same with up here, you've got your numbers for the lowercase, uppercase is the symbols. That's really all there is to this Olympia Traveler. There's nothing else fancy on it. It's just a really great ultra portable typewriter. 
comes in really fantastic case, a really narrow, low profile case. And so if you are somebody who, who likes to kind of move around a lot or you're living in a small space, you don't have a lot of room, this is a great option for you. We do get a lot of requests um, asking what kind of type raiders are um, lightweight that they can move around often. Uh, this would be one, it is very lightweight. So if you have a younger typer, typer or somebody who's just not really strong and they want to move their typewriter around, this would be a good one. Or if you like to take it with you, like you're a college student or you like to go to coffee shops or you like to go to your favorite um, rock, you know, that overlooks a canyon or something, then this is a, a really good option for you as well. Nice and heavy duty, very attractive, very modern Um really fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up and a, um, and a subscription or subscribe or whatever. <laughs> and I will see you next time. Bye.